Good morning, folks. This is what you call a calm 24 hours on the sun. No big eruptions, no filament snaps, no large surface surges or solar tsunamis. There were no solar flares of note, although the baseline flux is rising slowly. Let's analyze the three largest spots on the Earth-facing side of the Sun. Departing, we continue to see magnetic spread with no interaction. In the central sunspots, we still have delta class, but the primary zone in the lead umbral group is weakened to the complexity seen just behind it. Incoming, we have a smaller group that's longitudinally oriented and appearing to have some mixing potential. The Corona Hole Stream impact in yesterday's solar wind cleared the near-Earth cosmic ray bombardment. Big red circles showed the decrease. The stream is already waning away now, telemetry dropping, our shield is doing quite well. As the southern Corona Hole came in, we noted a quake watch, Jupiter and Mars opposed Earth at that time as well, and despite coronal magnetic fields blocking the equatorial portion of the hole, we saw a quick flurry of earthquakes in significant magnitude range and location, along with volcanic eruptions. It's been a calmer day and a half since then, but that northern positive opening top left will face Earth this week, all while some other significant planetary geometry comes together. In the evening sky, you can watch that happen. Just after sunset, Mercury and Venus can join and will stay conjoined pretty much all week long. Another uptick is expected, but for now the most interesting quakes are of moderate magnitude in the Americas. Idaho, California, Honduras. Let's get a quick ice update. Green dotted line is the 2012 all-time low marks, and after being about 50% higher in 2014 in the Arctic, we're seeing some decreased ice coming back now a bit. Meanwhile, the Antarctic sea ice appears poised to smash records yet again this year. That'll be three years in a row it's growing to record extents, and contrary to initial reports of thinning ice, the actual observations indeed show something else. Folks, I've also linked for you below the first episode of The Last Week on Mars. One of you, the observers, took it upon yourself to check the data for the Red Planet and found that we can do weather reports there too. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Mobile Observatory is in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico today. We'll be heading out to Tucson for the 6th and then Phoenix on the 11th. All details are at observatoryproject.com. How about blizzard warnings in Hawaii? Record snow in Montana and it's just getting started there. Phoenix smashing cold records all while Florida laughs as they enjoy record high temperatures. The wild swings back and forth can be seen on the delta and departure from average. Got a low in the east, drawing up heat from the convergence and bringing the Arctic in behind it. Convergence will be quite messy. Also a low off to the west coast delivering moisture to the area. The convergence yesterday dropped a tornado, but today the flooding will prevail. Cold comes in behind it, and the moisture won't wait long to drop out west. Pressure overlay on here in Europe to show the lows. Convergence swings south and back west towards the ocean, actually, and that'll deliver the worst storms around the edge of the low pressure cell and in towards the interior. Down under, you can easily see this convergence between nations. The one coming off the northwest low is a little bit harder to see, but still noticeable as colliding air masses. Another day of much of the same here. Mind the wind. Got your current conditions? And shots of our star to close at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.20 a.m. Mountain. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.